Riot is the new Blizzard. This is something that I've been thinking about for a while now, and I don't really hear anyone talk about it. But what exactly do I mean? For a game company to be replaced, there are three things that need to happen. First, it had to be worth replacing originally, meaning it had an established place in the games industry. Second, it faltered, and it's not what it used to be. And third, another company came in and took its place, possibly even operating better than the original. In this video, I'm going to explain how Riot did exactly that and replaced Blizzard in the games industry. Let's start at the beginning, how Blizzard became an established icon in gaming. Blizzard was founded in 1991, but didn't make a splash until the release of Warcraft Orcs and Humans in 1994. Warcraft essentially made RTS games popular, and this genre would prove very fruitful for Blizzard. Warcraft 2, Warcraft 3, and Starcraft were all immensely popular. In the midst of this, Blizzard acquired Condor Games, which was making Diablo. This became another pillar for Blizzard as an action RPG franchise which was spawned many successful sequels. With all that being said, we all know what really changed the game. The reason why WoW is such an important release in gaming history is because it introduced hundreds of thousands of people to the world of online gaming. I'm coming up with 32.33, uh, repeating of course, percentage of survival. Well, that's a lot better than we usually do. Uh, All right, oh, thumbs up. Ready, guys, Let's or... do this. Leroy Dragons! For better or for worse, WoW was intended to be accessible to anyone who wanted to give it a try and that was present in its design, but also in its art style. And it majorly paid off. Blizzard had hit the big leagues. After this, Blizzard saw continued success in StarCraft II, Diablo III, World of Warcraft expansions, and their first collectible card game, Hearthstone. This was another brand new genre for Blizzard, and once again, they nailed it by making the game extremely accessible and inviting. But the last game we need to talk about is of course, Overwatch. Taking lessons from Team Fortress 2, Blizzard refined the hero shooter design and placed it into a brand new colorful world with incredible characters. They succeeded once again, by bringing in new players to a genre that was previously considered hardcore. It was here around 2016 that Blizzard was at their peak. So what made Blizzard special? Well, looking at their history, I think it was three things. One, a mastery of different genres. Blizzard kept trying new things and succeeding their fans could always expect something new and interesting from them. 2. Iconic IP Warcraft, Starcraft, Diablo, and Overwatch It's not common that you see one game company create four titan franchises that people know and love. And 3. Approachability and Accessibility Blizzard was able to gain so many fans because each time they released a new product, they were attacking a different area of the market. And because of their art, music, and design sensibilities, people would try their games and stick around. This is very rare in the gaming space, and even rarer for one company to pull it off so often. So there you have it. In 2016 and 2017, Blizzard was one of the most loved gaming companies, and they had earned it. By caring about their players and just releasing quality games, no one doubted them for a second. But as it turned out, things were too good to be true. It's November 2018. We're at BlizzCon. Blizzard's annual gaming convention. The fans are having a great time, but the question on everyone's mind is, where is Diablo 4? It had been six years since the original release of Diablo 3, and a new game was heavily rumored. Was it finally going to be revealed? And then, this happened. We want to use mobile devices as the platform for a new Diablo game. Is there any plans to make this playable on PC, or is this a strictly mobile forever? Uh, are there any, uh, yeah, th this, the current plan is to be on mobile. Uh, we don't have any plans at the moment to do uh, PC. Do you guys not have phones? Yeah, you guys that, all have phones, phone. right? Hey, uh, just was wondering, is this uh, an out of season April Fool's joke? Uh... Woof. A free-to-play, microtransaction-heavy mobile game? This is obviously not what the fans were looking for. 
This wasn't a company that was expected to release a predatory mobile game. This was the first blow to Blizzard's sterling reputation. The next blow was about one year later, at the Hearthstone Grandmasters Tournament in Taiwan. During an interview with Blitzchung, one of the competitors from Hong Kong, he showed his support for the ongoing protests in his country. Shortly thereafter, Blitzchung was disqualified from the tournament, had to forfeit his winnings, and was banned from Hearthstone tournaments for one year. Once again, fans were furious with Blizzard. The Hong Kong protests were against the government having the ability to extradite their prisoners to China, where human rights concerns were rampant. Blitzchung advocating for the safety of his people was commended by the Hearthstone community. However, Blizzard appeared to side with the Chinese government. Faith in Blizzard was shaken again. 2021. Another blow to Blizzard appears in the form of a massive headline. The state of California sues Activision Blizzard for sexual harassment. Everything that came out during this lawsuit was horrible. And for many fans, this was the final straw with Blizzard, claiming that they were walking away from their games forever. I don't know how many actually did, but their anger is completely understandable. While the lawsuit was definitely the worst thing that happened at Blizzard, there were still more issues to come. In 2022, Diablo Immortal released, and it did in fact have predatory microtransactions. Overwatch 2 was extremely hyped when it was revealed, but disappointment after disappointment led it to being the worst user-reviewed game in Steam history. It's safe to say that in 2023, Blizzard is not who they once were. The stage is set for someone new to take up the mantle. Let's rewind for a second. In 2006, two years after WoW was released, Riot Games was founded in Santa Monica. At the time, they were unique because they wanted to make a singular, long-running, free-to-play game. Free-to-play games are everywhere now, but at the time, it was unheard of in the West. However, they believed in their idea and released League of Legends in 2009. And we all know how that turned out. By 2013, League was the most played multiplayer PC game in the world, and Riot was raking in the cash for microtransactions. Now, if Riot had only focused on League, and not made any other games like they originally intended, I wouldn't have considered them a challenger to Blizzard. However, in 2019, Riot became a challenger by announcing their plan to diversify their game portfolio. That same year, they released their first new game, Teamfight Tactics. Remember Auto Chess being huge? Then, in early 2020, they dropped Legends of Runeterra, essentially their take on Hearthstone, but using League mechanics. They also released Wild Rift, a port of League of Legends to mobile. However, the game that changed everything came out in the summer of 2020, when everyone was stuck inside looking for a new experience. And that was Valorant. Valorant is essentially a hero shooter like Overwatch, but its gameplay is most akin to Counter-Strike, a game known for being extremely difficult and hard to get into. Now, Valorant likely would have attracted hardcore fans on its own anyway, but the role of the pandemic cannot be understated here. 20 million people checked out Valorant in its first few months of release, and for the most part, they've stuck around. Currently, Valorant enjoys 25 million monthly players, which is right up there with Overwatch. It's safe to say that Valorant proved that Riot wasn't just a MOBA developer. And they're not done yet. Project L is one of the most anticipated fighting games to be coming out in the next few years. It's a 2v2 team fighting game made by hardcore fighting game players using the League IP, and it's going to be free to play. Riot has also announced Project F, an action RPG likely similar to Diablo, and their own MMORPG, rumored to be called World of Runeterra. But is all this enough to call them Blizzard's replacement? Well, let's do a comparison based on the three criteria I mentioned earlier. 1. Mastery of different genres. Let's do a quick comparison of all the genres Blizzard and Riot have released games in or announced. Blizzard has released games in eight different genres, including RTS, collectible card game, FPS, and a mobile game. They've also announced they're working on their first survival game, rumored to be called Odyssey. Moving over to Riot, they've released games in five different genres, MOBA, Auto Battler, etc., but have announced three more games in three new genres for them, Action RPG, MMORPG, and a fighting game. That's a total of nine genres for Blizzard and eight for Riot. Now, not all these comparisons are one-to-one. -one. Hearthstone is much more popular than Legends of Runeterra, and League is way more successful than Heroes of the Storm. However, on the whole I would argue that the quality and variety of Riot's offering is bordering on Blizzard's, and after a couple more game releases, it will be hard to say otherwise. 2. Strength of IP Both have strong enough IP to be used in multiple games, or launch completely new ones. In recent years, however, Riot has had the upper hand. 
The release of Arcane in 2021 showed the strength of the League of Legends characters, and introduced millions of people to the world of Runeterra. Riot has also collaborated with other studios to release games in their universe. So far we've gotten Ruined King, The Mage Seeker, and Convergence. And it's safe to say the strategy is going well. Comparing this to Blizzard, we had the Warcraft movie, which was fine, and the Overwatch shorts, which are great, but any Overwatch fan will tell you they would kill for an Overwatch show, and they haven't gotten it. Additionally, when Blizzard tried to collaborate with other studios in the past, it always ended in failure. Remember StarCraft Ghost? Neither do I, because it never came out. And yes, that's not necessarily the IP's fault, but Riot's characters have been much more present in the zeitgeist lately. 3. General Accessibility This is probably where the largest difference between Blizzard and Riot exists. I would argue that both Blizzard and Riot games are accessible in terms of art style and overall aesthetics. But, Blizzard has always prioritized making their games easy to get into, and I don't think Riot can say the same. Yes, League of Legends and Valorant are both free to play, but they are very intimidating. A MOBA and a Counter-Strike S shooter? Yikes. Not to mention Riot games are notorious for their toxicity. That all being said, Riot's games being more hardcore might be the factor they need to set themselves apart from Blizzard. So. After all that comparison, it's my opinion that Riot is a new Blizzard. They're matching the variety and quality of games, they have incredibly strong IP, and even if Riot's games are a bit intimidating, all of them are free to play, so people have no excuse not to at least try them. All of this being said, Riot is not a perfect company. If they were trying to imitate Blizzard, then they have done so a bit too closely. They do appear to be taking the correct steps to remedy their past problems, so we can only hope that the situation is improving. Riot is also completely owned by Tencent, a Chinese mega corporation that it has their fingers all over the gaming industry. This hasn't appeared to have any seriously negative repercussions yet, but we should keep our eyes open. As for Blizzard, things are kind of up in the air right now. The Microsoft acquisition just went through, but we still have no idea how things will change. I at least am thankful that Bobby Kotick will be leaving, and I have high hopes that Microsoft can get Blizzard back to what they once were. The best games industry is one that takes care of its employees, cares for its fans, and is inspired to be better by one another. Hopefully that will be the case with these two companies. That's all I have to say, so thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you agree or disagree with me down in the comments, and I'll see you next time.